So this is my lockdown diary with my dog Rumi. So how has my life changed during lockdown? I think definitely the biggest change has been that my partner of three months moved in with me into my one bedroom flat. <laughs> and it's really funny because um, I think in March or February, we were helping his sister to move house. And we had that conversation about, have you lived with partners before in the past? And what was that like? And would you want to do it again? And I said, well, I really love living alone. And um, I think that I would want to just be, make that a really good decision if I was to move in with somebody but again, because it can be tremendously painful when you move apart. So I would want to be really convinced. I remember it saying like that. And he said, yeah, me too, I feel the same. And we were like, oh, that's so great that we're on the same page. Cool, let's not live together anytime soon. And then two months later, we're carrying his suitcases up my up the stairs in my hallway and moving them in. And it was just, it was, it was ridiculous. Um, but we both made the decision for him to move in with me in a really organic and really simple way. We saw lockdown coming. I mean, we could see what was happening in Italy, France, Spain. Um, so we knew that it was only going to be a matter of time and we chose my place because he um, was sharing with somebody and I live alone. So it just made sense it would be way more comfortable. Um, and I have to say that it's been tremendously fantastic. It's been such a great experience. It was a massive gamble because we had only been together for three or so months and we were at that stage where we were like, this is going to be wonderful. And of course, all my friends were like, is it though? Let's see. Um, so the first evening that he came over, we sat down and had, we had to have like a crazy accelerated talk of, okay, you know, like just sort, sorting out the rules, you know, saying, okay, this is temporary. That was the most important thing, I think, for both of us. Um, this is only going to be during lockdown. That's changed a little bit, um, and I'll, I'll explain why in a second. But then we made other rules like, um, okay, what time do you have dinner normally? Because turns out he has dinner at 6 p.m. and I have dinner at 10.30 p.m. And what do we do about private spaces? Okay, so the living room is going to be the communal space, and then whenever you just want to be alone and take some time to yourself, you're in the bedroom. And then we kind of revise that after a couple of months really organically like we didn't say okay let's talk about this again in two months but we realized um, maybe two months in that it's also just really nice to be alone in the flat so not you know not with somebody in the other room but genuinely just alone so we've really tried to give each other some alone hours in the flat which works really well because I take her for walks he takes her for walks so so that's been great and um, so the reason why I said that um, we, we said, okay, it's just going to be temporary, this living together, and it's not, is that um, he actually got, he passed his Viva for his um, PhD during lockdown, um, which is fantastic. So he's a doctor now, which is really great. But it also means that um, his, his PhD funding has run out. He's on a part-time furlough um, for, for a part-time job and there are no jobs at the moment. So he's applying everywhere. He's looking into postdocs. He first was just looking into Edinburgh and Glasgow. Then he started expanding it to Scotland, to the UK, and now he's expanding it to the whole world. And he just, it's just the most difficult time to try to find any kind of work. I'm sorry if this is really distracting. <laughs> um, so because of that, he's had to give up his flat and or he is giving it up next month and is slowly starting to move his things in here. And we also think that that's just going to be temporary until he finds work, but we have no idea when that is going to be. So um, even though lockdown is easing at the moment, we, um, we're, we're still going to live together for the foreseeable future. Personally, um, it's been really fun. It's been great because um, he's a really good cook. <laughs> And he plays a lot of musical instruments and he's just a very chilled, kind and generous person. So even though lockdown has had really emotionally very difficult days and difficult days in terms of mental health for both of us, he's always been good 
to myself and to my dog. And so because of that, I feel that we've had a fantastic experience of support. Um, what was a typical day like before lockdown and what's it like now? Okay, so I'm a PhD researcher for the University of Edinburgh. I am technically in the middle of my field work year, which has come to complete halt or I'm trying to continue it as much as possible online. But before lockdown, I was driving around like crazy all over Scotland. So I was splitting my time between Edinburgh, Glasgow and Inverness. And then I'm also a very active sports person. I do aerial silks and I'm a teacher for silks and I've also started training in pole dance. I also enjoy a little bit of rock climbing and partner acrobalance. So my days would be filled with running around, networking, interviewing people, and then my evenings would be filled with training um, or teaching. So um, usually running around with crowds of huge crowds of people, very contact sporty, um, sharing equipment. So all of this has completely fallen away due to the nature of the pandemic. Um, I think when that came about, um, I was I was pretty physically tired, and I took a month off to just chill. And it took me a month before I restructured my training schedule, which was a really long amount of time. I think my body just thought I was on holiday. Um, but um, now the way that we organize it is we try to work a strict ish. <laughs> nine to five we found that more realistic is like nine to three um in terms of your um mental capacity of of um yeah just trying to get through what can feel like quite banal work in the face of a pandemic um so when we wake up we hit the computers straight away we work monday to friday and we're very strict about taking weekends off um I've, at, because I'm a medical anthropologist <clears throat> and my research has been on, on Lyme disease and there have been some massive overlaps between Lyme disease and COVID, I've been working very, very hard. So I'm, yeah, I'm working a lot. Um, and then in the evenings, I do my classes. So I teach circus conditioning classes three times a week for different companies. So I have some income coming in that way. And um, I take some um, different classes. So I've, I've started learning. So I know that one of the questions is, um, have I had any new skills and new hobbies? And the answer is yes. So one thing that I started doing is chair choreography, which I like to say it hurts me in the same ways that pole and silks usually hurt me. So it's like nice familiar pain. Um, so I got a nice sturdy chair and I partake in classes um, that usually happen in Glasgow. And I don't know of any chair choreography classes in Edinburgh, I may just not know it, but it was just fantastic to be able to take part in something that's in an entirely different city, which has been really great. So I've, I've been learning to flip all over these chairs and learning to dance on the chairs and that's been really exciting. And then a massive new skill that I'm acquiring is floor work. So. Um, because aerial silks and pole dance are both performance-based sports, usually you would do a little bit of floor work. And I'm not a dancer. I am terrified of anything on the floor. And I try to get up into the air as quickly as possible. So when um, lockdown hit, I thought, okay, this is my chance to learn how to do floor work. So as terrifying as it was, it's fine because you're in the comfort of your own living room. No one can see. You can keep your camera off if you want to. And it's been immensely empowering and so much fun. And I've realized after taking the classes for maybe about six weeks, how much I enjoy it and how I'm starting to really move differently. I'm getting to know my body again in a completely different way. Um, I, I have these um, people who I see every week on Zoom who partly I've never met before. I don't know if I'll ever meet them in real life, but it's, it's, it's fantastic. So, um, so my, my days are filled with working, trying to do, um, trying to push my fieldwork and my PhD as much as possible, and then in, in the evenings, train. One thing that's changed is I was living an immensely hectic life that involved a lot of commuting around the city, a lot of, um, the, the sports that I train, so pole and silks, they're not the most accessible sports because you need access to certain 
certain buildings for that. And so I would try not to miss out any training opportunities and just push my body through no matter how I was feeling um, because I knew that it would take you know, a certain amount of days or it would just be such a massive missed opportunity to not go. But now, because my training space is my living room, I can be a little bit nicer to my body and um, take some time off if I need to. Or classes are often pre-recorded, so I can um, just, you know, ask for the recording afterwards and do it then at my own time. So that's been something that's been really nice. And I know I've heard a lot of people say, I can't believe how hectic our lives were. I don't think I'll be able to go back to that kind of lifestyle before, as I had before. And I have to say, I really feel the same way. The hardest part for me during lockdown has been the remote inaccessibility to my family. So my parents both live in Peru and in April my mother was hospitalized for appendicitis and because my father can't really figure out how to use WhatsApp and he doesn't have a smartphone, um, it was about two, two weeks before I could speak to her and um, he would go to the hospital and then he would report back to me and tell me how she's doing but I wasn't sure to what extent he was saying things to not worry me and to what extent she was actually doing as well as he said. Um, so that was, yeah, that was, um, that was really, really difficult, just not having access to her and being really powerless and not being able to do anything was the hardest thing, I think, during lockdown. And now they both refuse to take the humanitarian flights. My father's German. They both refused to take the humanitarian flights that Germany was offering in March and April, which maybe was a good thing, because I guess we weren't really, the airports were not really controlling the virus at the time that well, and it wouldn't have been as strict measures as there are now. But now they are stuck in a country that has 4,000 new cases every day. They're both high risk. The, the, the healthcare, I don't know how, how quickly they would be able to receive good healthcare, as opposed to Germany, which is a country that has got the r not down and is, I mean, at least at the time of recording this, doing really, really well. So in my hometown in Germany, there are no cases, none, you know, so, um, and life is going back pretty much back to normal. So the hardest thing is definitely not knowing when I will see my family again. That's tremendously difficult. I think everybody who has family in the UK who they can see, you guys are so lucky. You are so lucky. I have no idea. And I know that a lot of people have had to say goodbye to loved ones via Skype and Zoom and FaceTime, you know, via computers and devices. And that was definitely the first thing that I was thinking about when lockdown and the pandemic happened was, will I have to say goodbye to my parents in this way and that is such a horrible thing to have to think about to think about how will I deal with that and to have to have that conversation with the person who's living with you so that they know that you're thinking about that and and you're both on the same emotional wavelength you know um so that is still the hardest part yes there's the monotony and there is a sense of banality in terms of the work that I'm doing, does it really matter? Does any of this really matter in the face of a pandemic? And there is that whole, oh, again, I'm at the, you know, computer and again, I'm in the same living room and again, the same person, um, the same life all the time. And um, I love hill walking. And I find just any time that you spend in nature is so incredibly important for your mental health and not being able to have that on such a regular basis is, is tremendously difficult. But um, I would still say the hardest thing is not knowing when I'm going to see my family again. Hmm. Um, so I've spoken about my skills and my hobbies. Um, I think the one thing that I haven't said is that my partner, because he plays guitar and he plays a piano, and I've been learning to dance, we've started doing some fun little collaborations together where I would try to translate some of the things, the new skills that I'm learning for dance and for chair, um, to the music that he's playing or he would try to adapt the music to what I'm learning and how I'm physically expressing myself and that's been just really beautiful to to have that also kind of artistic communication with the person that I'm living with I know that I'm immensely lucky
to have that. Um, I have been working from home. So because I am mid field work, I'm trying to minimize the time that I'm losing for, for research. So I've tried to do as many interviews as possible via Zoom, via Skype, try to stay in touch with the people that I was in touch with, that I was collaborating with. Um, I've done a little bit of work as well for the university and I'm teaching circus conditioning classes three times a week from my living room floor. Um, it has, I think the most challenging thing has been facing that monotony and just getting up and pushing yourself to do this again and again and again when you know that there is no, you know, you're not meeting people at work, you're not having that banter, you're not seeing friends for a coffee in between, you're not having like these little, um, you know, emotional relaxations in between. It's just, you know, all, all the work. Um, so there have been absolutely days when we've struggled and we've just tried to be kind and say, and try to just push through. And when we hit the wall, say, okay, today it's not working, let it go. I'll try to do something else. Or, um, I don't know, take a day off during the week and work on a Saturday instead. Um, so that, that's been the most challenging thing. But I think that I think that that's an okay, I think that's a pretty easy challenge to have, um, if I think about it. Um, bright spots of lockdown. I think it's been really a time of, first of all, really a lot of masks have come off with a lot of people. We've really seen who, who some people and some institutions really are. And it's, it's been surprising. Um, but there's also just been an amazing generosity. So in the first week of lockdown, a friend of mine who lives around the corner said to me, I have a garden. This was before we knew how anything was going to happen. And it was people were still, you know, raiding Asda for toilet paper. And she said, I have a garden. If you want to plant some food in my garden, you can. And she offered she offered to send me money. She was just like, if you ever need some money, I have some. And then another friend got in touch as well um, because they both know I'm a student and that I work freelance. And then there's been the generosity of so many, like theaters offering their catalogs online for free, dance spaces doing that for free as well. Um, it's been a time of such really beautiful generosity. Um, and then I think a massive bright spot has been just because we both lived such hectic lives, having the time to let our relationship blossom and grow. That's been, because it definitely would have taken a lot, much longer time than this, these accelerated three months for our relationship to get to the point that it is now where, you know, we're really a team who really have each other's backs as opposed to, you know, still kind of sussing each other out and getting to know each other. Um, so that's been an immensely bright spot. I think also, so it was recently my birthday. Um, it was weird to not be able to celebrate with friends and be kind of alone. But I had a Zoom party and people showed up from all over the world. I mean, I had people from New Zealand pop in to say hi and Finland and Wales and different parts of the UK and these are people who are from different stages of my life who would normally never meet each other unless it's my wedding or funeral and they met and that was just that was that was pretty cool and also being able to take classes from people who I normally would never see or would see once a year due to financial reasons or um, geographic distances. So I've taken some classes with an amazing teacher in Costa Rica um, who I, I would love to learn more from so much, but because she's in Costa Rica and only comes over to Europe once a year, my time with her is so limited, but now I can learn from her loads of times. And um, so I think in that it's been really beautiful. That's been a really cool thing about lockdown. Uh, yeah, so at the moment, um, I think we're at that stage where we're allowed to meet more than two households outdoors. And it's really interesting seeing how, how people are. And some people have definitely 
gone through very, very massively difficult times. Um, I count myself as immensely lucky because I am generally feeling very happy. But there are those days that my partner sister calls Corona days where it all just goes to shit and you're just, you just want to cry the whole day. I actually had a day like that two days ago when I was just angry with the world and angry because, you know, my, my partner is now in a, in a position where he just can't find work. We have no idea when that's going to change. We have no idea if that means that he's going to have to relocate, if we both relocate. I don't know when I'm going to see my family again. I don't know when I'm going to see loved ones again and I'm just hoping that everybody stays safe. So there are days where that worry it becomes so massive that you're just try I'm just trying to keep it together. Like I can physically feel myself pulling those strings of myself in together to hold myself together. Um, and then, and then there are days when you just, I feel immensely grateful that my dog, my partner and I are healthy and, um, yeah. And then you real and then that, that's when you realize that's the most important thing. So yeah, we're just kind of going up and down. Usually we're good, but there are definitely those down days and those down days is when it's so good to be together and to have people who we can reach out to. And I think another bright spot has been that I actually know my neighbors now. <laughs> I did not know them before. And my neighbor is an 80 year old woman who does yoga, Pilates, Tai Chi, like she's crazy. She's amazing. And I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have known that before we all exchanged phone numbers um, so that we could help each other if we needed to. So that's been pretty cool. And that's it. I think she needs dinner now. Thank you.